Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome back to Fallout 4 Survival Mode on our Nuka World playthrough. So, following his previous entrapment in the gauntlet, Avery has managed to break free and suddenly finds himself the overboss of three raider gangs here in Nuka World. A somewhat unexpected turn of events for the fellow. However, he's had an idea with a little bit of help from uh, Gage back there. So, he's turned his back on the Brotherhood, and spent a little time on his own, but he's still basically the same decent person who wants to help people. However, he doesn't feel the Brotherhood are the way to do this. So, now he finds himself in possession of what is, hello, essentially his own personal army, assuming he can control them anyway. So, with that in mind, he's going to uh, pursue the possibility that the remaining threats in the Commonwealth might actually be possible to tackle with a, a small army at his disposal. So he's going to pursue that avenue and see what happens. Basically find out, can he actually control these raider gangs? Because obviously if they're left to their own devices, they'll act the way raiders usually do. So, the first thing we have to do at this stage is head on out and meet the uh, I suppose our underbosses, the heads of the three raider gangs. And the first one, Nisha, is head of the Disciples, and she's holed up in here. Just below, aren't you, Gaff? Come on, girl, you know we should run this place. Not some little greeny Gage dragged in. We're giving him a second chance. Gage screws this up, he knows we'll skin him alive. So shut up and be patient. What about you, big guy? Nothing to say on the matter? As long as he doesn't get in my way. I don't much care. Yeah, figured as much. Both of you just get out of here. And make sure the others get the message. Hmm. Dissensions in the ranks of the disciples already. But it looks like the boss is still the boss, so for the moment. So, you're Gage's little pet project. So, are we going to try and intimidate her? Be sarcastic? Or are we going to go for nice and a... You'd think I'm the overboss would be the nice option, or it's in that place, but... Uh, Not all there, are you? Watch yourself. Hmm. Yeah, let's keep her under control, I think. Watch it, lady. I'm no one's pet. Really? Gage made Coulter, and now here you are. I'm just calling it as I see it. Everyone knows we all wanted Coulter dead. Of course, if I had my way, it would have been a slow, painful process. But whatever. Let's get this meet and greet over with. I'm Nisha. I lead the Disciples. We've only got one rule around here, and that's keeping the peace of this... alliance. Otherwise, the way we see it, this world stopped caring about rules the moment people started dropping bombs on one another. If we want to uh, keep them under control and not have them raiding like crazy. This world needs rules. Otherwise, we'll never recover. Rules are dangerous because people start to trust them. They make you think you're safe, but once you turn your back, you're dead. Coulter thought some sort of rule or code made him untouchable. But he found out he was wrong. The hard way. Although I could give him a little credit. He built the gauntlet, after all. Of course, it was total shit at first. No imagination. But we spiced it up a bit. Not quite sure what's going on with the Disciples so much, really. I think blind doesn't really seem like an effective way to uh, defend yourself. That thing should be shut down. It's dangerous. Dangerous? People are dangerous. That thing's child's play. Just a bunch of traps and critters. Let's just hope Gage is right about you. He made a lot of promises to get us here never followed through. So you better not screw this up, because I'm not about to tolerate another round of bullshit. I'm gonna do things my way, whether you approve or not. Oh yeah? I just have a few things for you to consider before you go off and do things your way. You see, the Disciples don't make empty threats. We make good on them. We aren't swayed by caps like those spoiled brats obsessed with their hair, or those savage animals who can't behave in public. Fuck this up? And I will kill you. Although, I admit I have even better plans for Gage. But, if you support us and keep your promises like a good little overboss, we back you. 
You get to live, and everybody wins. Mm, I can't say I trust her much. Don't really need to think about it. It is going to be my way. But, uh, yeah, as long as all I have to do is keep my promises, then uh, don't promise anything, anything I'm not willing to give her. I don't make promises, and you'll do what I say. Looks like you're already a step above Coulter. We'll see how this plays out. For now. Oh, well, well. But if you change your tune and decide to play nice, there's no shortage of work around here. So if you're looking to prove you've got what it takes, you know where to find me. Hmm. Didn't realize she had stuff she wanted doing. I'm kind of curious what it might be. That is basically the disciples, so the closest to your garden variety of uh, raider. Just generally into butchering things and looking mean. That last one died too fast. I'm losing my touch. Well, the raider armor in Nuka World is significantly better than a lot of the armor, in fact, in uh, the main game. Certainly the uh, regular raider armor, and I think the metal as well. But it is significantly heavier. Sadly. Nisha so. really only has one rule around here. Don't get caught. I have a rule. Don't do it in the first place. It's something you can't get caught doing. But we'll beat that into them with a large stick eventually. A parlor theatre. Home of the operators. Going to have a shifty around here. All anyone's turned up so far is that he's got that pit boy on his arm. So, our new overboss is a vault dweller. Or ice the vault dweller. Hmm. You can go. So, Gage knows a few things about us, but somehow uh, the rest of them are utterly clueless, apart from like the obvious that I'm wearing a pit boy. So this should be interesting. So we have Mags and William Black, the two siblings who are in charge of the operators. Hey. Well, I suppose we all owe you for putting down Coulter. Man was yeah. an idiot. Made us all look bad. <laughs> A clown stuck in his own little car. I guess we can take some solace in the fact that someone finally gave him what he deserved. I want to know, what did you feel as you did it, when you brought that walking pile of human garbage to his knees? <laughs> what were you discussing when I walked in? Well, you, Overboss. You're an unknown quantity, and True. we're interested in knowing who we're dealing with. So we'd like if you answered the question. Yes. What went through you as you crushed the life out of that oath? Nice option, because we don't want them to be staying nasty. The operators, to be fair, though, are the nicest of the bunch, such as these things go. Regret, I guess? I, I didn't want to kill him. You'd be the only one. Agreed. Not going to make much of a Can't splash in the Luka world with an attitude like that. Regardless, Gage's decree means that you're the new overboss. I suppose we can only hope you work out better than the last one. I'm Max. This is my brother. William. Pleasure. Along with our co-conspirator, Lizzie, we run this crew. Call ourselves the Operators. You'll come to understand soon enough that we are the only gang you should be backing around here. Because we're the only ones who see this place for what it is. A temple. A testament to the only thing that matters in this world. Um... Soda? <laughs> Not quite. Caps. This place was built for the sole purpose of taking caps out of the pockets of fools. We only joined much Gage and Coulter's little menagerie in order to restore it to that goal, though by somewhat more cutthroat methods than I expect its founders intended. Instead, Coulter had us sitting on our asses for the better part of a year while he lived large in his damn mountaintop. And that means, if you're going to be in charge around here, We'd like some assurances that you intend to bring this place back to its true purpose. And that we're going to get back to robbing folks of their fucking money. 
And you want to explain to me why exactly I should be backing the operators? Because we dispense with the bullshit. My people aren't commanded by lunatic bloodlust or animal instincts. We are the only rational players around here, and would make valuable allies, so long as we know you intend to get this place back to bringing in caps. So we want to know what your plan is. So they're fairly mercenary, but they're uh, not utterly insane, which is uh, probably making them the cream of the crop, as it were. My goal is to use this place to make all the money I can. Well, it's about damn time. Hmm. I look forward to seeing your claims put into action. So, you're welcome in the parlor whenever you like. Make yourself at home. And if you think you might be interested in running some jobs for us... You just come speak to me, and we'll all be anxiously awaiting getting this place back to doing what it does best. Okay. Pack act like rabid animals. Ought to be dealt with the same way. Somebody appears to be taking Over a lot boss. of drugs around. Making there. trouble? Good. Rags and William normally have me frisk visitors. But you... Get special treatment. Yeah, I wouldn't try it, buddy. You already know I'm carrying a buttload of guns anyway. So. I never did get why Coulter bought him three ganks to claim Luca Wool. I mean, he had us. Don't need the rest. Mm, it's a big old spot. So. On to the final group, the pack. Gonna meet their leader. Interesting bunch, this lot. Not quite sure how they managed to get new recruits, really. Welcome to the nest, boss. We was wondering when you'd make it down here. Yeah. Okay. So apparently they've got animals just wandering around. And they're into fighting animals, great. Okay, now that racket's over, let's talk to Mason. Hey. Now that I get a closer look at you, not sure I'm buying this new overboss thing. <laughs> as long as you care about yourself, you'll do what I tell you. Ha! <laughs> You might make it out of here alive after all. Name's Mason, the Pax Alpha. This here's our side of town. You might be over, boss, for now. But I'm the boss of the pack, and it's gonna stay that way. Long as you don't go forgetting that, we're gonna be fine. You can be the boss of the pack. As long as I'm here as your boss, that'll do for me. Your people aren't gonna cause me any problems, are they? The pack does what I tell them. You don't get in my way, they won't get in yours. The pack? Oh, fitting. You smell like animals. Ah, never heard that one before. Look, it ain't like anyone's broke up about Coulter. Just figured on his replacement being, well, different. But Gage says you're the boss now, so you're the boss. You don't want to be over, boss? Me? Overboss? Nah. Seems to be a short-lived position. Well, given that I failed and he then said no, I'm inclined to think that maybe he does. I don't think I like this fellow very much. Coulter was weak. Why'd you follow him at all? Been wondering that ourselves. Don't get me wrong, Coulter was definitely Overboss. Not a man to mess with. And things were good in the beginning. Real good. But that was a year ago. Then Coulter went soft. Wanted to take stock in what we achieved. I think you're a bunch of ungrateful children. Careful there, boss. We ain't ungrateful. Just fed up. Sure, this place beats living in the shitholes we had out there. But it ain't the palace of caps we signed up for. Ain't none of us happy. Not even the disciples. And they're normally a chipper bunch so long as they're drenched in blood. Things were going to hell fast, but Gage put the brakes on that. 
got us together and promised he'd find someone to deal with Colter. Worth a shot, but I don't imagine it's going to uh, go anywhere. So what's the real story behind Gage and Coulter? Ain't nothing I ain't already told you. Yeah, I didn't really think so. I'm not Coulter, so that better not happen to me. Yeah, sure, boss. I get it. I do. We're totally willing to give you a chance. We are. Look, let's cut to the chase. You're going to do right by the pack. I hear you've been talking to the other gangs. Be a good dog and do what you're told. Or you'll be put down. Oh, there, boss. <laughs> Not in front of my guys, all right? You've got enough to worry about without a dominant struggle inside the pack to deal with. You know what? I think we're not so different, me and you. I want you to have this. Consider it a token of our mutual understanding and respect. Well, that went well. That's also not what he gave me, because that would be my gun that I already have. If you're curious, it's an upgrade from the um, uh, combat rifle ad using the uh, handmade rifle. Just dishes out a bit more punishment. I like the look of it. It's much more uh, akin to what he would have had pre war, I think. Anyway. One last thing before I let you go. There's always work to do around here, keeping the zoo in order. If you're ever able to lend a hand, drop by. Loyalty's a two way street. I'll give him that one. So what actually has he handed me? Ah, the problem solver, apparently. Ah, interesting. Increased damage with each consecutive hit on the same target. Useful, that particular effect on a uh, automatic weapon. Uh, that's all bleeding damage, is probably use the most, one of the most useful ones, because that stacks as well. Hmm. Might bear that in mind as a possible uh, backup weapon at some point. Okay then, so, back to Gage. Okay. Hello, Gage. The overboss returned. Well, you're back in one piece. That's yep. a good sign. Everything all peachy with our friendly neighborhood psychopath. Sure hope you didn't promise them too much. I mean, going a little over the top is part of the game, but you don't want them holding it against you if you can't deliver. They'll do what they're told. That's all that matters. Oh boy, okay. <laughs> Time to roll up your sleeves, boss. There's work to be done. This place is huge. Divided up into sections, parks, whatever the hell they called them back in the day. We need to take them all back, one at a time. Every section we secure gives us a little more breathing room and more resources. You stake a claim, plant a little flag for one of the gangs, and that settles it. It's theirs for good. Who gets what, that'll be your call. Whoever you hand it off to will appreciate it, but the others might get a little jealous. You know how it goes. I thought the whole point of having minions was to get them to do the dirty work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give it time. You still got to prove to them you're worth following, remember? So that's yeah. it. Nice and simple, right? Take a minute. Settle in if you want. And then let's get to it. And hey, we're in this together. So I might as well go all in. You want me watching your back? You just say the word. <laughs> Why? What's in it for you? For the love of... Ain't you been listening? I'm the one that sold this whole idea to the gang. Shit goes south. It ain't just your head they're gonna want on a stick. I like my head where it is. So if I can do anything to help keep it there, I'm gonna. So, what's it gonna be? We doing this together or not? For right now... No, thanks. I got this. Suit yourself. Change your mind. I'll be around. And there we go. So Gage can now be a companion if you like. So, Kidding Kingdom, Bottling Plant, Safari Adventure, Dry Rock Gulch, and the Galactic Zone, which we have to clear out and secure. 
However, five areas, three gangs. I mean, somebody's going to dip out. And they are unlikely to be happy about this. So from a role-playing standpoint, the obvious thing to do here would be to pick the operators, as they are the most civilised and most like uh, the character and aligned with his goals, and uh, allow the other two to be dissatisfied and uh, destroy them. However, no matter what you do, you always end up with a, a two on side, one against you scenario. So, it's a case of choosing which gangs, which two of the three rather, we want. So, obviously the operators, based on personality, it's a bit of a tough call. The disciples are basically murderous psychopaths, so I'm kind of against them. And the pack are not a whole lot better. But I think from uh, Avery's point of view, the pack are probably going to be more useful for, if nothing else, cannon fodder. Storming buildings and uh, compounds and the like. While the operators sit back and lay down covering fire, that sort of thing. The disciples could probably fulfill the same role. They're a little bit too sadistic, I think. So I think we're going to come down on the side of the pack over them. So, we need to push off, clear off the uh, five areas of the park and allocate them to the two gangs we want. We could do two, two and one, but uh, why take the risk? I might as well go three, two and zero. And then it'll definitely come down the way I want it to. There's a certain amount of RNG involved. But, as this has been a very talky episode, I'll cut it off a little shorter, I think, and hopefully we'll get another one out a little bit sooner and we'll start clearing out the parks because those do take quite a long time to do. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, I'm sure you know what to do by now. My social media links, as always, are down in the description if you want to keep up to date with everything I'm doing. You want to see when I'm going live and what's happening with the videos and so on and so forth. So do drop me a follow on there. But for now, thank you very much, and I will be speaking to you all very, very soon.